Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a plugin using QGIS. First of all, make sure that you have the plugins available. And they're called Plugin Builder and Plugin Reloader. These are really important. If you don't have them installed, go to Manage and Install Plugins and find Plugin Builder version free and also find Plugin Reloader. If you can't find them in this list, check your settings and make sure that you have Show Also Experimental Plugins checked. Okay, once they're installed, you can start your plugin using the menu Plugin Builder. So here we go. You need to fill in a lot of information. Uh, I'm going to do it a little bit faster. I'm going to say, okay, my class name is plugin. It's, uh, sorry, it's example. My uh, name is example. Description, just an example. Module name, example. We can keep it like this. I can fill in my email. It's not really important for now. So you have an option to build a little description of your plugin. Then we have an interesting thing. What kind of template do you want to use? Uh, mostly we will use two button with dialog, but you have other options. And this is interesting. How do you want to show it up in the menu? So I'm going to say example, and it's going to be in this menu, the plugin menu. You can choose another one like database, raster, etc. But I'm going to keep it at plugins. Then next we have a lot of checkboxes. I just keep them all checked. Then some information that you might add for your website and even flag it as experimental, which should be a good idea. And in the end, you have an output directory. So for me, I always use one directory to build my QGIS plugins. And it's this one, the programming Python QGIS. So once that's done, I click generate. I get a little warning and a little explanation. We we'll skip that. So now if we go to the location, I'm going to go to Python, put it in the right window. It's here, QGIS example. Here is all the code that was created by the plugin. So the next thing we should do is compile this resources.qrc file. And this can be complicated if you don't know how to do it, but that's why I'm creating this video for you. You have to start the OSGO4W shell. It's part of the QGIS installation. You have to go to your location. So in my case, this is the D drive. I'm going to skip to programming, Python, and then we go to QGIS, it's the one. And there we have the example directory. And if we look in the directory, you can see the exact same files, of course. Now to start that PPI, sorry, that compilation of the QRC file, we have to use the PyRCC5 command. But if you do it like this, it will say it's not recognized as an internal or external command. Be sure to do this, py3 underscore env, there we go, and also qt5 underscore env, there we go. These are also part of the installation and they are available when you start the OSGO4W shell. So run both of these and now you have PyRCC5 available. And to build the user interface, we have to say, or to build the resources for your user interface, we have to say PyRCC. The input file is resources.qrc slash o which means create output, and it should always be called resources.py. There we go. So now you will find a resources.py in your directory, and this will create uh, contain stuff like images, etc. But you need it to get going with development. Now, one important thing is that we can't find this plugin yet, because if you look at how QJIS is uh, managed. You have this settings, user profiles, open active profile folder. If we go there, you can find a quite complicated path. And in here we have a Python directory and a plugin directory. And this is the location where you should have all your plugins. 
but we put it on another location. So how can we make sure that plugin, the, sorry, that QGIS knows about this plugin? For that, I use a tool which is called Link Shell Extension. I will put the description in the link. And this is really nice. Uh, in Linux, you have an option to make sim links, and this enables Windows to make sim links as well. So once that's installed, I can go to my original location. So I'm going back to Python, QGIS, example. This is my code. I right click on the example directory, and I'm going to choose this one, pick link source. Once that's done, I'm going back to the directory of QGS, which is easy to do by going to Settings, User Profiles, Open Active Profile Folder. There we go. And Python Plugins, that's where we want to have the link to our code. And I'm going to right click again and select Drop as Symbolic Link. There we go. And now you should see a link to your code. So this is like a sim link in Linux, but then on Windows. Okay. Now you won't find the plugin yet. I'm going to plug in. I'm going to look for it. Or oh, I'm going to look for example. Well, there are a couple that contain the word example probably somewhere, but they are not uh, the one that I made. And that's because you have to restart QGIS. So I'm going to restart it. There we go. And now if you go to Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins, and we type example, you will see that it's, it, it is available in the list. I'm going to check it. There it is. So I started it, and you find another button here, which is the one, and you also find it in the menu, example menu. And if I click on it, you can find this very interesting dialog. Well, it's a start. Let's see how to add a button to this user interface. For that, we have to go to Qt Designer, which is also part of your QGIS installation. So I click on Qt Designer, and there we go. And I can open a user interface file, which can be found in our directory. So example, this is a UI file. You can find a UI file there. I'm going to click it, I'm going to open it up, and you will see the user interface exactly like the one you find when you click on the button or the plugin button. So back to my Qt Designer. Now let's add a button and maybe add a radio button and make some, well, not really interesting. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. I'm going to put it here. Hi there. And radio button is going to have the text option. I'm going to save this. And then if I'm back in QGIS and I click the button again, you can see that no changes has, have been applied. And that's where the reload plugin or the plugin reloader comes in handy. So I'm going to configure it. I'm going to say I want to reload the example plugin. Okay, there we go. And now if I click this button, reload, it has reloaded the plugin. And now we see this button and this option button. So that's nice. Now we can create a user interface. And in the next lesson, I will show you how to create some code to have some interaction with the user. Thanks.